I'm pretty excited because I'm getting picked up at two o'clock in the morning to go for a four day ski trip in Andorra in the Pyrenees. I haven't skied there for about 18, 19 years. And it's kind of a jolly, but I'm super excited because I bought these beauties, look at them. I'm excited. I'm really excited they come as a pair. Anyway, uh, what's good about these is they're really stiff. So when you're kind of going really fast, there's no give in them, which makes you an even faster skier. And I'm a pretty fast skier. A couple of years ago when I was skiing with Hannah, my daughter, we got to uh, 66 and a half miles an hour, which is pretty quick, downhill. <laughs> Just leaving our hotel. I'm here with these old, old cronies here. This is these old cronies here, here larking about. Yeah, men of a certain age. Are you going to be able to keep up with me today? Just being streamed live somewhere. Right. Is it being no. streamed live? No. no. Hello. <laughs> That's a scooter. Hola. Yo, yo, yo. Bagashki. <laughs> What tends to happen is there's sort of a transaction that goes on between couples whereby, you know, I do this thing for you and you kind of do that thing for me and we're kind of all right and we're ba it balances out a little bit and all the rest of it. But the problem with that as a transactional process is that when you come under pressure as a couple, it can become quite mean. You can become quite kind of tight in um, investing in each other, in, in kind of acts of love and stuff. So imagine this is like um, what we call an emotional cup, and that'd be like the general feeling of love that you have uh, towards your partner. So imagine this is your emotions, and what happens is I come home and I'm, you know, I, I empty the dishwasher and I make a little contribution. You see, a little bit in the bottom there. And then you do something for me, you collect the kids, you know, when I was supposed to do it. And that helps a little bit and stuff, you know. And we kind of pour a little bit in, a little bit, and it balances out. So I do this for you, you do this for me, and there's a transaction that goes on. Which is, on one level, fine. But I have a different approach. My approach is like, why not be extravagant? and ridiculously over the top in acts of love towards the other person just to see what happens. So instead of being like, I'll do this little thing for you, you do this little thing for me, why not kind of be over the top and say, you know what I'm going to do? I, I understand what it is you like and I'm just going to keep topping it up. So for example, I'm away at the moment. You may have noticed this is Andorra. And while I'm away, I've been sending lots of text messages home to my wife. It's not like I'm thinking about her all the time, because clearly I'm not, because I'm skiing around the mountain. But I know she likes to know that I'm remembering. So any opportunity when I stop for a drink or something like that, I think, oh, I'll just send her a little message. So what I'm doing is instead of being mean and thinking, I'll just send her a message in the evening, what I'm doing is I'm just stacking it right up. So I'm going, no, oh, I'm going to just be extravagant in the amount of love I give her, just because, well, why not? Why not be extravagant? Why not just keep going like that till it just kind of overflows? Why not be just totally over the top in the love we give to the other person? Because it might, it might, it might just elicit a remarkable response. You might find that she starts off, who, whichever gender, you might find that the other person starts to be extravagant in the love they give to you, and it makes you start to feel like you're a really loved person, which well, fundamentally is what it's all about, isn't it? So my top tip for this week is be extravagant in your love. Don't be mean. Don't be one of these people who just puts a little bit in, waiting for the other person to respond. Be extravagant and just let it all flow out. 
and see what happens. You okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get home from Barcelona after our few days skiing and unfortunately as we arrived here at the airport the flight's been cancelled. Not postponed, not delayed, cancelled. It no longer exists. So trying to find another flight unfortunately the problem is Gatwick Airport's full of fog. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have on one occasion slept all night on the floor of an airport and it's not that great. It's to be avoided at all costs. So the jury's out. It's 3.28 and I've just got home. What happened was the airline diverted us they didn't divert us. They said to us the desk that flight's cancelled, but we can put you on another one to South End, which we took. And then they organised a coach that went from South End to Gatwick. And then we got our car at Gatwick and drove home. Half past three. 3.28 a.m. <laughs> 